and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, freaks and geeks, trolls and derps alike, welcome, welcome all. I am Shannon, and I'm coming to you with Mullet Mike. How you doing? Very nice. <laughs> a box full of fluffy ducks, all right? If I was any better, I'd be twins. How about that? <laughs> oh my god, you're so southern. You're damn right. You're damn right. So, um, for anyone watching who doesn't know who Mullet Mike is, Seriously, what the hell are you doing? Why haven't you been watching Creepy Gaming? Um, so, Mike, can you give a little overview of what you do and, you know, all of that? Yes. Uh, the Sticky Paddle is a YouTube channel, which we call it the Sticky Paddle Gaming Network because we have a show called Creepy Gaming on it. We also do various live streams plus giveaways and charity videos, so it's a network of a couple of different personalities and we just try to help promote other people events and channels i think that's a pretty good overview really yeah it is and i, would I like wasn't even i wasn't even reading off a script either so i'm pretty proud of that I, i'm very proud of you well, thank you thank you i was <laughs> I, proud of that. I, I was i was proud of that intro that was pretty good thank you um i'm a big fan so you know well, thank you. Um, so I would like to state for the record that uh, I do do political content a lot of the time, and I want to make it clear that my views are not the same as Mullet Mike's. Uh, this has nothing to do with my politics. It's just I got an opportunity to interview one of my favorite YouTubers, so why would I pass that up? Oh shucks. I know. I can't help it. But uh, in all honesty, um, Mullet Mike's a really cool guy, and uh, you know I've talked to him a few times, and he's been real, real nice to me. So uh, I want to thank you for that. Well, flattery will only get you everywhere. So apparently, it got me an interview. Hey, look at it! Right? See? See? <laughs> yes. So, um, how did you get started with doing YouTubing? Grew up watching YouTube. I say grow up because we're all growing up regardless of what age you are. Um, watching YouTube and really my biggest inspirations were uh, James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd from uh, his channel Cinemassacre and uh, the guys at Screw Attack and just kind of watched their videos and really enjoyed it and said, huh. You know, that seems like something I would want to do one day. And just kind of kept it as a at the side, you know. You know, I was doing other things at the time. I was uh, pursuing a songwriting career that failed miserably. But uh, I think we've it, all gone that route, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if you haven't had a garage band, you're just you're just not American, huh? I mean, I well, but, I didn't I didn't have a garage band, but I uh, did play Irish music at festivals. So I mean, that's close enough, right? That's even more unique. So that's. That's even cooler, really. But, no, it, it was just something that I had, like, on the side, you know? And I, it, it was just always there. It was always there in my mind. And uh, eventually, it was me and a group of uh, some childhood friends of mine that, I mean, we were just like brothers. Uh, it was myself, that guy, 9409, and uh, Swamp Donkey. And we just got talking about it one day about, you know, you you want to make a channel? Should we, should we, you know, what, what are we going to do? And the, the motto, I think of the sticky paddle was, we don't know what we're going to do, but we're just going to put stuff out there. <laughs> we're going to, we're just going to open up a channel at least. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the, the beginning of the end as I call it. <laughs> <laughs> The the end of your sanity, I'm sure. The pretty much, yeah. The end of the end of a uh, quote unquote normal life as I know it, but there is no such thing. As and normal, then you so. became one of the big people and forgot the about big... the little people. No, I'm just kidding. Well, one of the big people. Are you talking about my weight? That is just rude. She well, just called me fat, everybody. Well, you know what? I will say you have a she's, noticeably. She's fat shaming. She's fat shaming. Like me. I have any room to talk, sir. Uh, <laughs> You're not fat. But no, um, 
I, I will say you have noticeably lost weight in the past couple seasons of Creepy Gaming. Well, thank and you. Uh, I want to say you. congratulations on that. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I've worked really hard to lose the weight that I've lost. And I'm, I'm actually kind of glad that you brought that up because, like, uh, this, this way I can, like, dispel any rumors or anything before they start. No, I'm not on crack. <laughs> not anymore, uh, no. at least. Well, no, no, no. That was that was way back, way back before. You know, yeah. No. Uh, all kidding aside, like I'm, I'm not a, not doing drugs. I don't have cancer that I know of, anyways. I'm, hell, I might, but not that I know of. Um, literally, have just been trying a new diet, which has been working, um, and just exercising more. So. Yeah. So, so what kind of diet is it? It's I forgot the name of it already, but it's literally where you like you eat one meal a day, which I know some people are just like, oh hell no, which that's how I was at first. I was like, there's no way well, because that's, see that's yeah, that's if where that's I like. That's the key to losing weight. I should be 85 pounds right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it, it, you got to exercise too. Which oh, that's that's that, that was the other thing. Well, you know, I was trying not to make that awkward. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, if it's, uh, you know, if you're going to be posting this and people don't know who I am. Um, yeah, go ahead. Let, right. let, the, let the folks know. <laughs> all right. Uh, I am disabled. Uh, I am wheelchair bound. And uh, for all intents and purposes, just call me a cripple. I do and everyone else does and I don't really care. So, um, and I make so many cripple jokes and I'm sure I will make a few here today so if that offends you I'm sorry well and, and that's what I want to go ahead and enter I would like to interject real quick and just say like that's how I got to know Shannon was somebody was like cripple shaming you for God's sakes like on <laughs> Twitter one day and I'm not the kind of guy that like I don't you know, if it's not my business, I usually stick out of it, you know, stay out of it. That's just, you know, how I am. But, like, this guy was, like, being, like, relentless, and I almost even, like, tweeted something. But, like, before I could even think of anything clever, like, Shannon had already had this guy, like, almost in tears apologizing, you know. So I was like, okay, this chick's cool. Like, she's got a good sense of humor. She, uh... You know, she she's very aware of being a cripple, and my, you've embraced give, it. You know, and that's what's cool. My give a damn broke years ago. So you give a damn, yeah. Just like it, well, it's just like that medicine I take every morning. It's called fuck it all. Oh, just take yeah, you two yeah. of those, and yeah, yeah. yeah give, and a give a damn is all. the uh, is the over the counter one. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Fuck it all that is the sense. one you need the the stronger one. You need the prescription. So. Well, that makes that makes sense, really. <laughs> that makes sense. But no, the diet that I was doing is just basically a. It's just a eat one meal a day. But the cool thing about it is you get to eat literally like whatever you want. I mean, whatever you want. You can but have you're a, not a, controlling a, like a five. Calories. You're not controlling like calories. No, 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 no. You eat literally whatever you want. Like if I wanted to eat an entire pizza. I, I can. How many and times then have follow you eaten it up. an entire pizza? Oh God, I don't think numbers go that high, Shannon. No, I mean mistaken. since I mean since you started your diet. <clears throat> Quite a few, really. I mean, really, there's like you know. Okay, let's see. I've started this diet probably about a year, almost a year now. And really, a lot of those days, you know, when I don't have time because. Preferably, if if I was going to get, like, real, like, health nutty and, like, really gave a damn and uh, just had the time, I would try to cook me a steak and rice. Like, that's, like, the best meal I can I can take. I mean, you want to talk about, like, great protein. Pro, pro, can't talk. Great protein and everything. That's the perfect kind of meal, you know. Mm -hmm. But I don't always have time to, to make a steak. You know, I don't always have time to, to waff up some rice or roni. So I'd say quite a few pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> well, hell, I was going to say, you know, let alone, um, you know, having time to make steak. I'm thinking how much it would cost. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Cost on top of it. Yeah. You know? I, I, just but, you love, know, I just really love... 
Good. Well, I I just love that for you it was steak and rice aroni. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. here is the most nice expensive choice thing and rice aroni. <laughs> you damn right. It's the San Francisco treat, lady. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. I mean, I guess uh sure. I, <laughs> moving I, on I, next I'm, I'm question more of, i'm more of a potatoes girl so oh Just okay yeah. uh mashed i take it any any kind i'm irish just any just th <laughs> oh well there you go yeah there you go I, I insert see. alcoholic joke here <laughs> um, <laughs> i'm czechoslovakian so Oh, Jesus. Go ahead and throw any. I don't. Yeah, I don't right. Have yeah, any try slurs to find a good stereo. Yeah, go ahead and try to find a good Czech joke. Uh, I dare you. Check yourself Cl before you wreck yourself. Wow, that was actually pretty quick, and uh, you get a you get a golf clap for that. Yeah. That was just because that was quick. Thank you. That's the best I could come up with. Um, that wasn't too bad, really. So, you said you were inspired by James Rolfe. Um, oh, very much so. Okay, so were you really um, inspired by his, like, Halloween episodes, and that's where you got creepy gaming? Or what what inspired you to go that route and focus on the creepier aspects when you could have just in, or, uh, reviewed any kind of game? Well, that was kind of... Okay, well, when the Sticky Paddle, I think we turned... Okay, the channel started March 2011. So as of this interview, we're celebrating five years of the Congratulations. Sticky well, thank you. Thank you. It's I did not think... It, it's the longest career I've ever had, Shannon. It really is. So uh, it was about a year into it, and w we still had that motto of, we don't know what we're doing, we're just posting stuff. And, you know, we're just throwing a lot of spaghetti up on the wall and something's going to stick, right? Well, the only problem was I felt like, um, and this is not a knock on any of the guys or anything. It's just the stuff we were putting up was Call of Duty videos. And, I mean, it, like I said, it's not a knock on the guys because I was doing it myself. You know, I was posting Call of Duty videos. Because that was the thing to do at the time, right. you know, much like right. Minecraft took over, uh, you know, a few years and after. Then FNAF. And then just, uh, oh my God, just one after another, right? It's an, it's an endless cycle. But we were doing Call of Duty videos, and it got to a point where it's like, I wanted to do something that was going to stick out, you know? And I knew I wanted, I didn't want to just do a, uh, a, a commentary you know, and there's nothing against that. That's what they were called back then anyways. But it's right. like I didn't just want to do like a, just a commentary over a game. I'm, I'm a writer at heart and always have been. So I wanted to script, you know, script stuff. And uh, what I got from James Rolfe and Cinemassacre was production. You know, I wanted to make a production, you know. Yeah, I, I will say and, yeah. you have some of the best production values I've seen on any gaming channel, or any channel, period, actually. Well, well thank you. Thank you very much. That's that. I really appreciate that, because that's one of those things that just tend to get overlooked a lot, especially in YouTube, oh, because no, you, uh, so you, many things... You and, I would say, uh, Rob Dyke take it the most seriously that i've seen oh wow oh wow thank you like i said that's very kind of you i, I appreciate that that's, that's very nice that's very nice quick make a dick uh, joke get the feels away <laughs> <laughs> yeah right uh no no it, it i wanted to add production and could i have done like what the angry video game nerd did sure Sure, I can just make a, a like a production show where I review a game every episode, or I could just keep going the route of Call of Duty where I'm just making commentaries. But I wanted to fine tune something. You know what I mean? Like, and that's right. kind of to me that's one of the key secrets to to YouTube is fine tuning your content. And um, I loved like 
creepy video game stuff. I'm a big horror fan as it is. Like, I love horror movies. I love scary games, books. You know, it just, you right. name it. Uh, it's it's obvious. It, right? It's obvious you have a passion. Oh, well. Well, thank you. I mean, it's, it's, that's just, that's just me. I've always been that way. I've always loved scary movies and stuff. And, um, really the, the origins of creepy gaming was me trying to find a series on YouTube like creepy gaming. And there wasn't one. And I, I, there was now, you know, don't get me wrong. There was other series, you know, there were other shows where it was like a creepy pasta reading or, this was like there was another show about like urban legends, but that that had more to do with like um, it, it wasn't it, again it wasn't what I was looking for with creepy gaming. I right. didn't find a show that covered it all. I wanted to find a show that did horror horror game reviews. I wanted to find a show that talked about creepy Easter eggs. I wanted to find a show that would do an occasional creepy pasta. And there, it seems like everybody was just creepy pastas, or right. just Easter eggs, or just let's plays of scary right. Every, games. Everyone was and pigeonholing themselves. In a sense, you know, in a sense, and that's again not a knock on anybody because again, look at look what Pewds has done, look what Markiplier has done by doing let's plays of scary right. games. You know right. it. It's just that wasn't for me. Well, I I really I truly product. feel like you, all of you guys are, you know, especially you know Markiplier and all of that, and Matt Pat are all cut from the same cloth. You know, you're doing the same type of stuff, just doing it in your own way and making it unique for you. And well, and a lot again, to be said to, for that. Well, thank you. And again, to me, that's the key to YouTube. Anybody that's listening that wants to be a YouTuber, like, that's the key to it. It's just like, be yourself and find something that you enjoy doing. You know, something where your personality is really going to shine. Because if you don't have a passion for it, then why even start, you know? I, I definitely agree with you on that. Um, when I finally found my niche of uh, not giving a crap anymore and just talking about being <laughs> a cripple. <laughs> uh, I found I, ha I started really having fun and really enjoying it and looking forward to making videos. And, and that's uh, the beauty of it. That's yeah. the beauty of it is, it, you know, it, this is a great debate of YouTube, right? Is, is it work or is it play? It's both. You know? It's definitely it, both. It, and you it's taught me both. that, actually. Well, I, I don't know about all of that. No, but, you, you did. You kind of molded me into the fine-tuned machine that I am today. Somewhat. Well, thank you. I, well, you gave me I don't know if that's a good beginning. thing. I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, I don't know if I want to necessarily take credit for that. No, I'm just saying again, you, you helped I, me, you helped me with the work ethic thing. Well, you know? well but, thank you, thank you. It, it's just, it's it's... A lot of people want to say it's not work. They're just, especially like with gamers. You know, I don't know what it's like on your spectrum of YouTube, uh, but like in the gaming spectrum, go ahead. It, it, it is like that, but um, I don't really get it from people that I know through YouTube or Twitter or whatever. Uh, I mostly get it from friends, you know. Oh, it's a nice hobby. It's like, I pay taxes, man. You know? Right, right. Uh, again, a little known fact that a lot of people don't put into consideration, you know. <laughs> yeah, but we yeah, keep you know, and, and and I'll yeah, right, right. And I'll admit, like, it started as a hobby. I think it started as a hobby for everybody that oh, yeah. originally started with the sticky paddle. And that's why there you know, you see me and Rich today because we're the ones that continue to pursue it, you know. Uh other guys went their other directions, wanted to go different paths in their lives, and that, that's great. And like I said, uh, I'm happy for them. And we all ha seem to have a mutual understanding about things, and which I'm very grateful for. But, um, yeah, you could tell, like, me and Rich wanted to do this and wanted to, like I said, if we could make a living doing something we love, well, that's the American dream, isn't it? Absolutely. 
I, you know, I, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. No, I, I, it absolutely is, and it's it's amazing. You know, granted, I'm not to the point of being able to make a living or anything like that, but it's cool to be able to you know make money doing what I love. You know, well, have and, a passion for. And and see, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I want to talk about like my humble little beginnings because when that first year when we weren't professional when we were just doing it for funsies and as a hobby, um, I was working two jobs. You know, my first son was on his way and I was work, I was, uh, working at a pizza joint and working at U-Haul, then doing the sticky paddle at night. So So did you ever get discouraged? Like, why am I even doing this? All the time. Yeah. Only, only all the time, Shannon. Like (laughs) it, you still, I still get discouraged doing YouTube. That's yeah. part of YouTube, I think. Uh, it's it's a constant. Uh, it's a net. You know, it's flow. a constant. It feels like there's very much flow. so. Very yeah. well worded. Very well said. Because it, it is. It is. You know, there's. It, it can be very discouraging sometimes. But another, and here you go, kids. Like I said, take notes at home if you're wanting to be a YouTuber. Secret number two is stick with it. Stick with it. I swear, if I would have quit every time I got discouraged, I would not be here where I'm at today. Getting getting interviewed by one Shannon from Liberal Lunacy. So, like, it's, you know, it's just just stick with it. You know, keep it up. There are going to be tough times. There are going to be discouraging moments. There are going to be videos that you're really proud of yourself, and then they just get shat on. You know, <laughs> that's that's oh, part man. of the you that's part of the YouTube game, though, and you have to you have to learn to live with it. No, the real problem is when you <laughs> make a video that you think is okay. That's something I can just throw up on the channel. It's no big deal, and everyone hates it, and they're so mad. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's real easy, you know. And I, I understand it. You know, that's yeah. one thing I try really hard is I like, I, I want to, I want to be close with my viewers. Yeah. And that's why you, I, I've, you, I've read a lot of comments where people are like, oh, oh my God, you actually responded. Mm-hmm. I was I'm shocked. like, yeah, I, I actually read my comments. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I, I was absolutely shocked the first time you retweeted me. Why is that? Because uh, all the YouTubers that I watched, like, you know, that were gaming YouTubers and stuff like that, they don't give you the time of day, most of them, or they're just, you know, they don't notice because they're not on. I'm not saying they're, like, jackasses or anything. No, no, but, I gotcha. But, you know, and, and, a lot of And them, you know they get flooded, too. Oh, you yeah, know. yeah. It, but, you, and you know what that's like yourself. Yeah, at this point. I Hell, you, you got more Twitter followers than I do. It's There's the like, irony. I, my, my my channel has more subscribers, but yet your, your Twitter your is has just like, like twenty times the subscribers. Hey, but literally your your Twitter is like like five times the size of the sticky paddles. That's so true. see, I mean, it, again, hey, ebb and flow, right? Like, it, it, give it's, give it's, a little, take a little, you know. I I think it has more to do with the. Uh, the uh, female form, you know, and yeah. maybe I, I I didn't say that you did. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll I'll just be honest. It's all about the boobs. Yeah, show your boobs you more, and you'll get more Twitter followers. And no, I'm not telling you that, kids at home. I'm telling Mike to show his boobs. <laughs> all right, well, you asked for it. All so right. next creepy gaming, I'm showing my boobs. <laughs> we need to get you. No, nice I will not bra. subject you. I will not. I was about to say, I will not subject you, poor people, to such horrific, <laughs> horrific <laughs> sights. So uh, um, I will show you. I will show you victim number one from Mario's creepy pasta. But I will not show you my man boobs. There's, <laughs> there's no call for that. I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. Well, darn, I thought I was going to get somewhere. Uh, <laughs> no, nice try. <laughs> nice try, though. So you were talking about some channels that did Urban Legends thing uh, things, and is that where uh, Creepy World came from? No, I was trying to think of a good example of, like, video game Urban Legends. That was more or less like... Um, like, there was, like, a theory, and this is... Okay, this is, like... 
I want to show my age on this because, like, back in the world before the internet, you know, it was like at school, people would be talking about a game, and they're like, "Did you know there's a secret ending to this game?" Like, uh, oh god, what's the one? Um, Metroid. What's the street? Well, that one. But see, that one was true though. Where Samus ends up, you can play a Samus in a bikini, right? And right. As a girl, you know, like, but but there was like some that were just totally fake, like uh, in Toe Jam and Earl uh, 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 Two. If you go on Toe Jam and Earl Two, you, like at the end of the game, there's a secret alternate ending where they like blow up Earth and stuff, and it was just like total over the school lunch table bullshit talk, you know, just to try to impress friends. Right. And that's more or less what that or, show was or about. Or if there's like some kind of code to unlo- uh, unlock yeah. God mode that didn't yeah. exist. Yeah, stuff like that. And I can't remember the Street Fighter one. I'm sure there are like, th- you know, tons of people right now just yelling at the screen. It was this character, you idiot! But I, I can't remember what it was. They were supposed to be like... Uh, a character that was unlockable in Street Fighter, and it wasn't true. But they eventually brought him back into the game, like, or they brought made a version of him to put into the game in a like a future installment or something. Didn't like that, that didn't that happen? That's, oh, are you thinking of Mortal Kombat with Ermac? No, that I know what you're talking about with Ermac. Okay, because see that one's that one's a true one. I was trying to well, think no, of an example. Well, it started. A false people one. did think he was a character, but it was just error message. Yeah. Or it was a uh, error, error, error macro, yeah, which it and, was, it, and it was on the roster list. Right. And people thought the code for error macro was like, Ermac. like oh, Ermac, Ermac. Oh my God, that must be another character. Yeah, so then and they yeah, they did eventually one, do that. Cool. Yeah, I, I'm, I, the, and they did the same with Street Fighter, but it was fake. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like, it, right, but I right. guess Ermac was fake too because he wasn't really there. right. He was fake, but then yeah. they, they were yeah. like, you know what? Let's just let's just do that for the for the fans. You know. Well, I'm tortured, and I've made a fool of myself now in this interview. So I'm gonna have to look it up as soon as we get done with this interview, and I'll be like, "Damn it, I knew it." <laughs> yeah, but so um, I I do want to talk about Creepy World a little bit because yeah, yeah. You know, that's actually, um, qu- it quickly became my favorite from you. Oh, well, thank you. And I, you know, I, I, don't get me wrong, I love creepy gaming, and, you know, I can never get enough of it, so please, God, never quit. <laughs> I what, are you, be, what are you trying to say here? I'm saying I would be very bored. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> uh, okay, I, am, I am very guilty of going back and binging through your channels or your cha- yeah, channels, both of them, multiple times a year while waiting <laughs> for more creepy gaming or creepy world. So, well, thank you. Thank you. That's the but, best kind of viewer right there. Yeah, I, I, I don't just give you the one view. I give you no, multiples. No, you're, you're, you're what we call a reviewer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I definitely think I'm just a diehard fangirl at this point. Oh, well, I'll take that too. I'll accept it. Nice. <laughs> but um no I, I like i love creepy gaming but i've always had more of an interest in you know just weird stories and urban legends and stuff mm-hmm. like that and so uh you know like uh you know beyond belief factor fiction type shows you know right right and right. uh so you know i was always into that and unsolved mysteries with robert stack and so i've always just love the unknown and when you started that show i was like oh my god yes that's awesome (laughs) i was so excited because it's like you were already a personality i really loved watching and then here you are going more in depth into stuff i really enjoyed so it was great oh cool cool well thank you yeah now uh, a funny story about and say i've never told this story so this is an exclusive you should feel special yeah uh, now, funny story about the origins of Creepy World was, okay, at this point, I think I had been doing Creepy Gaming for three seasons, so, we're, we're you know, I was doing Creepy Gaming for about, Yeah, I, I'd you know, already been watching Creepy Gaming for about a year, so... That, uh, yeah, that I was gonna sense. say, I think I'd been professional for about two to three years at the time, and at this point, you know, uh, 
parents and in-laws at the time were like wondering like, what exactly do you do for a living? <laughs> you know, where, where did your money come from? They're, they're yeah. secretly suspecting you're selling pot. <laughs> well, something, I mean like something they don't, you know, they, they just didn't know. And it was so hard to explain to them what an Easter egg is. No. Have you ever tried telling someone over 40 what a creepy pasta is? Yes. I mean, really, it's like... Yes, like a, I a have. Cra a crappy like, what? The, 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 a crappy best way, the best way I could tell... The best way I could explain a creepy pasta to someone who doesn't know what it is is that I... I would give them, you know, the campfire tales that, you know, you used to tell at summer camp to scare the crap out of each other. That yeah. on the internet. Basically, that's that's how I explain it to them. I go, it's just a scary story. The, it derived from the word copy and paste. It was a copy and paste story. And then the creepy stories became creepy pasta and turned into creepy pasta, yada, yada, yada. It's such a long story, you know, just to explain to family what I do for a living, you know. And I couldn't say, you know, professional YouTuber. They're like, what's that? How does that work? Right, because you know, that wasn't really in the vernacular at that point. It really wasn't, and, and still isn't in parts of the no, world. No, no, you know? a lot of people look at me like I have five heads when I say Exactly, YouTuber. yeah, exactly. And it's like, yeah, I've, you know, I remember telling, again, and this isn't against older people, just one of, like, my older aunts, you know, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm a professional YouTuber. She looked at me like a dog just shit me out of its ass, all right? She had this <laughs> look on her face like, what in the <laughs> fuck is this kid talking about? <laughs> I swear to God. So, <laughs> the but uh, the funny story about Creepy World was it got to a point where I had to finally, like, I was like, okay, not everybody gets, not everybody's a gamer, you know, and I get that. I understand that. And if you want to know the truth, I actually like Creepy World more than Creepy Gaming. And that's not saying that I don't enjoy making creepy gaming. I just, I'm a film school dropout over here. You know, I'm kind of like, I love like, I like documentaries. And I've always enjoyed making documentaries. And, and I feel you, like creepy world are like these like little mini docs. Yeah. So that's why I really enjoy when I do get the time. That's why I enjoy making creepy world. And I I love I love creepy world so much because <coughs> they're so, they're short, and you can kind of just binge them real fast. And they're like potato chips. You just really want more. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair enough. I like that. Yeah, and you know you kind of put on a different persona. Like, you're still Mullet Mike, but you do a different voice, you know? Yes, and... yes, I take it down to the bland, monotone narrations. Just to, just to give it a little bit more ambiance. If you notice, I don't show my face on that either. Yeah. I wanted to give it a totally different feel than Creepy Gaming. And, and yeah. it is. You succeeded. Well, and... thank you, thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm using it as an umbrella. You know, I'm using the brand of Creepy Gaming to launch Creepy World. But at the same time, if you give it a chance, it's a totally different beast. You know, it's yeah. a totally different type of animal. So, um, all right, we should wrap up here soon, but I got a couple more questions for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I have to ask, what was your favorite and least favorite creepy gamings to work on? Not saying you didn't like the episode of the game, but... The okay, of just uh, production and production right. hell. Huh? Okay, right. well that's a, that's a good question because I've been asked what was like one of the more fun ones to work on, and then ones that were hell. Um, wow, that's uh, that's a good question. Okay, because I think I know where you might go with the worst. You you tell me first, and I'll uh, <laughs> because I'm I curious. Well, since I was helping with it. <laughs> at least uh for some of your graphic stuff uh i'm going with um the metal gear yes uh, yeah yes by far the metal gear far. mullet mike's metal gear month or whatever Mel uh M metal mullet gear mike's Mar metal gear mania Ma mania marathon yeah and <laughs> i i made that i made that whole logo for that thing for you 
And and I did get to use it. I did actually get to use that. If you watch the Metal Gear Solid, I did, two, and I was I was very excited. Yeah, I got to use it because the the story behind it was that was going to be a Thanksgiving week marathon. I was literally going to have a new episode of Creepy Gaming out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday on Thanksgiving would be Metal Gear Solid Four, and then on Black Friday was going to be. Metal Gear Solid Five, which, which it ironically was, ended up being the season six opener, <laughs> which I was fangirling like a motherfucker when you told me about that. Well, I just thought it would have been a cool little premise. Literally, I had I had been working on these episodes months, and I mean literally months in advance to have mm-hmm. five full episodes produced for that week, and I go the week prior to upload them. And literally all of them get flagged. Like all of them get flagged with copyrights from Konami, which, you know. Which with, is when I taught you about the hashtag fuck Konami. If, right, right. <laughs> well, and then it was like, I'm, I'm really glad to see that like hashtag WT, uh, yeah, WTFU started popping up after that. Yeah. I'm not saying like my episodes was the catalyst for it because no, it was no. a, it was a, a, the nostalgia critic from channel awesome who really kind of started that movement. Yeah, I'm and really, honestly, really grateful it, he did because that was fair use. If anything, I was trying to praise these games. Oh and yeah. Konami it, those, wanted, those episodes were a love letter. To, yeah, to Metal Gear. I was, I mean, that, I was singing praises to their names, but it was like that wasn't good enough for them. They wanted all the money for those episodes too, and it's like you don't understand. I just spent like a quarter of my year <laughs> working on these five episodes, you know, and to help promote your product nonetheless. And it was just a big clusterfuck and got really ugly. It was an ugly copyright dispute, but. I am happy and proud to say that they are all available to view on the Sticky Paddle, as of right now, anyways. As and of this I, interview. I will put uh, links in the description on my channel for, for those. <laughs> and then one of the funnest ones that I've worked on, I, I can name a handful. I can name a handful because there have been a lot where it's required other people's help you know, mm-hmm. and um, one that comes to mind is uh, Doom 3, or okay. it was the Doom Trilogy episodes. That mm-hmm. one was fun just because I got egged, <laughs> literally got <laughs> egged. Like, you, I hope you people realize how much I love all of you, <laughs> you know, to do these stunts <laughs> we do that, that we, both myself and Rich Nificent do. On the sticky paddle. Oh, much love and much respect for Rich Nificent. Uh, But yeah, and such a sport for letting you throw him into a TV. Right. And by the way, he volunteered himself for that. Just on the further record, he he volunteered himself for that. Oh, because I'm, I'm sure he did. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now we're really we're both big like huge wrestling geeks, and we've always been talking about doing spots like that. So that was our opportunity to do that one. So that's like a good example of like a fun time. Maybe not as fun for Rich, but it was fun <laughs> for me. But uh, I mean, yeah. I've never gotten to pick up and throw someone into a TV, so you know. Right, right. So no, there, there's definitely some fun times. I mean, that that one's it's easier to tell you which one was production hell compared to which one was the funnest to work on because there, most of them are fun, you know, especially oh, yeah. when there's a crew working with me and if I, if I know I know if I'm getting the room laughing, then it's this is going to be good. And when you're having fun making it. I feel like that fun transcends onto the audience, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. And I, I find, at least, you know, with what I do, and I mean, I just mostly do, you know, me rambling and bitching about, you know, social commentary and, mm-hmm. and cripple stuff. But if I'm having fun with it and, you know, making jokes and lighthearted, the video does so much better because you can tell 
you know, I had fun making it. Well, and that's that's exactly it, it bleeds over. Exactly, it, it does. That's very well said. That's very well said. So, um, anything you want to tell us that may be coming up? Sure. Not, not any spoilers. No, no, no. I'm I'm glad you asked because I always, you know me, I'm a shameless whore when it comes to plugging stuff. So I love like promoting and plugging my own stuff. Thank you, Shannon. I think for you're this just a shameless whore anyway. Just period. Just period. Just, well, maybe I don't know. But the this is where okay, what's coming up? Of course, more creepy gaming. Season six goes all the way till December. Um. Oh, I just got sad. <laughs> what? I was like, oh no, only December. <laughs> well, it, a lot of people like get really confused about the seasons, but you know, again, because it takes literally about a hundred editing hours, I would say. Well, and when I say editing hours, I should say production hours. For each episode of Creepy Gaming that you see that averages about 15 minutes, you're looking at it over a hundred production hours. This is why they so, pay you the big bucks. I don't. Know, I wouldn't say all that. I, I was. I was making. A joke. Yeah, that's very. Yeah, very sarcastically. Yes, the yeah, the quote unquote big bucks. Now it, it's um, it's a lot of man hours go into creepy gaming, from writing the script to filming to recording to voiceovers to doing audio editing to doing video editing hell you know we've talked about it off the record before just right. like you've seen how you know me work on a single right. episode literally for weeks right literally and weeks I've, I've come time. to you with some of my horror stories when right I'm, you know about right. pulling my hair out we've all been there <laughs> but um Creepy gaming is definitely coming up, and like I said, that's that's how it's been for the last three three years now. Is the seasons start in the spring, and they always end in December, so I can take the holidays off and spend it with my kids and stuff like that. Aww. So, um, but creepy gaming is going to continue on through December. Uh, we recently relaunched Creepy Gaming Extra, which. Thank you, by the way. Well, I don't know if those have I been got showing upset. up. Well, I don't know if those have been showing up in people's sub boxes or not. It's so, been like, showing up in mine. I can well, tell you good, that. good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad and to hear I a little bit of reconfirmation. Them. But yes, I've kind of brought back creepy gaming extras because those are just like I said. It takes like a hundred hours, man hours for like a creepy gaming. Well, a Creepy Gaming Extra doesn't take near as long because there's no filming involved. Yes, there is script writing and hardcore editing, you know, for production elements. But as far as, like, live footage, none of that. I mean, it's 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 just a lot quicker and easier to get to the point, too. Right, because so. you, don't, you don't have to get all pretty. It, it, well, thank you. Yeah, right. <laughs> what, are you telling me you don't put on tons of makeup? Oh, that's just me. Sorry. Yeah, no, not me. Sorry, it, I, 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 it does take me hours, literally, to get my beard just right. I will admit that. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not a diva, but when it does come down to the beard, I do have to get it just right. Well, I will say it is the most glorious beard on YouTube. Well, thank you, thank you. It was only given to me by Zeus himself, so I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I do just appreciate you borrow that. it and. Yeah, it's on loan from the gods of Olympus. <laughs> Until Kratos comes to snatch it off your bitch face. I am Kratos. I think people found that out at E3. They're like, holy shit, Mullet Mike's Kratos. Oh my god, it all makes sense now. Holy shit. <laughs> but uh, the other thing that's coming up that I, I really want to, like, I'm really excited about is we're going to be relaunching Retrospect. Which, um, unlike retro video game review shows, it's more about like just your personal experience with yeah. that game. I, I was know? digging that. Yeah, yeah. There's a long story behind that for another interview one day. But that was, you know, we 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 launched a pilot last year and it did pretty well, and and we just never really followed up with it. So yeah, we'll. We're definitely about to relaunch that, which I'm really looking forward to because I love my retro games. Now, and... will you please, please, please 
Put me out of my misery and tell me the creepy world. More creepy world. And the last bit of news <laughs> that I say purposely on last because Yay! because of you, there is more creepy world on the way. Yay! Um, I actually talk about it in a recent interview where it's just like my mullet mic channel is definitely my backup channel. You know, the sticky paddle is my priority. Right. Again, that's that's what pays the bills. That's what helps keep diapers on my kids, you know, uh, keeps food in their bellies. So I have to keep with my priorities. But when I get the opportunity to, I try to just like mass produce as many creepy worlds as possible. And I think that's what I'm going to do this time around is just try to like mass produce like six of them. You know what I mean? And awesome. They might it it might only be like once a month. You know what I mean? But at least drop them once a month or once every two weeks or something. But um, I'm really like I said, I'm I'm kind of clearing a little schedule. I'm or making a little bit of schedule. It's crazy, Shannon. It's creepy. It's almost like we're running a professional operation here. No or way. Something. I know. I know. I don't believe it myself. It's only taken five years to get to this point. But, uh, yeah, I feel like that we're, we're kind of getting to that point now where we are starting to have more regular uploads, uh, weekly uploads every Saturday. There's typically a new video, um, you know, and, and I want to kind of keep this up really. So. All right. Well, please do keep it up. I, I aim on it. Good awesome. Lord willing. And the creeks don't rise. Yes. How's that for Southern? Ugh. God, if it was any more southern, there would have been biscuits and gravy involved. <laughs> do, you, do you know how you compliment an Arkansan? Uh, I'm sure you're going to tell me. That's a nice tooth you have there. <laughs> See, I can make fun of myself. <laughs> oh. But, hey, b before we end it, you do have to give me credit that I'm not like your stereotypical redneck. No, like, don't you let, are not. Don't let the accent fool you, because I... I'm actually, you know, you know, I have a little bit of common sense. Believe no, it or not. uh, yeah, no. believe it or not, no you know, it is, it is a, it is a fabled story. Well, you could not, have I fooled do. me. I, 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 I probably could have fooled a lot of people. <laughs> 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 well, uh, thank you, Mullet Mike, for letting me interview you. Uh, it was a blast. That, thank you, Shannon. This has been very flattering, very humbling, and I'm, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. So thank you very much. All right. And, uh, yeah, that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.